Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be demoing you a couple of scripts as well as teach you how you can create a basic version of one of those scripts. The first script I'm going to show you is the Spotlight script. This basically creates a spotlight effect on your screen. So wherever your mouse cursor is, it, the spotlight light will follow it like in this manner. So you can put your focus onto it, the audience's focus onto it. And the second script is Win Hole. Win Hole basically puts a hole onto your active window when you run the hotkey so right now i've got a site window behind me so let me just go ahead and maximize it and bring back up the visual studio code if i press f1 then it's going to let me see the area behind my visual studio codes i can see the site window like that i can do an inverse of it by pressing f2 and that's going to let me see everything behind my active window except for the area that is around my mouse cursor like that. So I'm going to be also lastly showing you how to create a script that does a spotlight effect kind of thing as well and walk you through line by line of it. So if you're interested in this video, please continue watching. Okay, so the spotlight script can be found in this URL or I'm also going to be uploading this onto my website. So you should be able to find it from my website as well. Um, spotlight can be used to give a focus onto an object or a person. So I'm just going to go ahead and use this draw live on screen script in order to uh, draw a stick man on my screen and put my spotlight on it so that it looks like I'm focusing on a person that is on a stage or give it like a, a 007 movie uh, effect like that. So that's how maybe you can uh, use this script. I know there is not much use for it. There is a hotkey called F1. This basically just toggles it off. If you press it again, it toggles it on. So that's the basics and that's all for Spotlight actually. Now let's move on to the wind hole. Wind hole creates a hole as you've seen before so there are hotkeys here as well so f2 f3 and f1 and if you press f1 then it's going to put a hole on the active window and that hole is going to follow your mouse cursor so you can see what's behind it so let me just press f1 to untoggle it so i'm just gonna remove this to make it a blank script and if i go f1 then I should be able to see the site window behind this Visual Studio code in the form of a circular hole. I can see the person here as well. F1 again will toggle it off. And when I have F1 on, if I press F2, then it's going to do an inverse of that. So I'm going to see everything except for the active window. However, I'll still be able to see the circular area around the mouse cursor for the active window. So I can type things out like that you can see it here so if i press f1 again that's going to toggle it off i can apply that onto other windows as well so let me just go ahead and maximize this and go f1 then it's going to show everything behind it um, except for the circular area so i can type single instance force like that in site window in this manner so this is how you can use it again i'm not sure when you would be using this um, f3 makes it paused so if you press f3 it's not going to make the uh make the circle follow your mouse cursor anymore so in today's video let me okay i might have to get out manually for some reason just give me one second Oh no, it's going to stay there, even though I, I did not. So even though, so let's think, if I, if I stop the script, it's not, the circle is not going to go away. It's going to stay there until maybe I resize it or still there because the effect, the whole effect on the window is still going to be there. It's still going to be applied, even though I stopped the script. So stopping the script is not good enough. Um, so I'll run it again and toggle it off and then stop the script. Okay, so in today's video, I'm going to sh be showing you a simpler way to create the spotlight script. 
um, just to give you an idea of how it works. So, so I'm going to be using this test script one as my base script and I will be writing out a script that gives a similar effect to the spotlight effect. Uh, but in the shape of a square instead of a circle and I'll explain to you why a bit later and I have my cheat sheet on my right hand side so I'm basically reading out of that and typing out what I see and that will minimize my error so I don't waste your time as well so I hope you don't mind it too much so cold mode so I'll try to explain every single thing that I write as I go through it so cold mode mouse will be set to screen because I'm going to be using my mouse cursor as a anchor set batch lines to negative one and that is because we need to constantly use my our CPU processor in order to update the screen and GUI negative caption this removes the caption of the GUI and so um, basically we're going to create a GUI that is going to take up the entire screen like this and make a hole in it so that's a basic idea of how this works HWND is uh, as a way to store the uh, unique ID of of the GUI inside this variable called HWND so it will start from here always on top I'll make this always on top and DPI scale for the GUI basically does a uh, does this so if you have the scale and layout in the uh, Windows settings changed to 125% or higher than 100% then your GUI will be expanded unless you have the DPI scale so even though you've put in a width of 100 that might be expanded to width of 125 if you have the scaling up done on your uh, monitor so in order to remove that effect then you you have to use uh, dpi scale and plus <coughs> e0x20 this makes the gui click throughable so you can click through the gui uh, and click what's behind the gui uh, color to black gui show x0 x0 y0 um width of a screen width height of a screen height because we're going to create a GUI that covers the entire screen so just capitalize this and then we're going to set the transparency of the GUI to 50 and we're going to do that by using the AutoArchy ID HWND which is this variable right here so if I go ahead and run this then you will see that the screen has dimmed a little bit and that's because we have a black GUI, GUI that has a transparency of 50 so we have a semi transparent if I remove the transparency and run it then we're gonna see a black screen taking up the entire screen alright so that's gonna be our canvas so to speak and we're going to use set timer and run a label called spotlight every 10 milliseconds and I'm gonna be creating that spotlight down here spotlight label and this spotlight label which runs every 10 milliseconds is going to constantly detect where my mouse cursor is and it will get the X and Y coordinates of the uh, mouse cursor and I'm going to have to create a shape that's going to be the hole that's going to be put in the GUI and like I said I'm going to create a square instead of uh, instead of a circle so I'm going to have a, an X value which is going to be the starting position of the square at Y value also going to be the starting position with the height of the square and the reason why I do this is because when you do try and make a circular shape you're going to be doing some complex calculation involving cosine and sine and floor and etc etc in order to convert your um, your shape into a circle so this will have a lot of different coordinates that go into it but for me I'm just gonna use four different coordinates to designate the four angles within a, a square so and that takes a lot of so if you try to create a circle that takes a lot of processing power as well so if I go ahead and run this it's not that smooth I can see how there's a bit of a jaggedness when I run the script 
and e then that's even though when I set the batch lines to negative one. So I'm just going to be using a square instead and this is just to demonstrate the idea of how this works. Now I'm going to create the width first. Width is going to be a hundred um, but because I want the square so if you take this to be my square I want the square to sit uh, have the mouse cursor sit right in the middle of it in the center of it instead of here because right now if I just use the xy coordinate as the starting position of my square then it's going to be here and uh, that's not what I want I want the mouse cursor to be in the center of the square and therefore I'm going to have to make an adjustment to these xy coordinates and so I'm going to take out 55 pixels uh, from each of x and y coordinates and go x plus 100 so that's going to be my width and y plus 100 is going to be my height okay so now we have to use the win set command and region sub command and i've already explained how this region sub command works so if you don't know what's going on here then you can go and watch that video on region so i'm going to a screen width width so I'm going to start from the top left hand corner and cover the whole screen so a screen okay that's annoying okay I'm just going to copy this into my clipboards a screen height okay so that actually has to be a screen width and a screen height zero a screen height Zero, zero. So we're done here. Um, so we've started from here, went to the right, bottom, left, and then back to the top left hand corner. And from this point on, I'm going to uh, draw out the square um, or put a hole in the GUI in the shape of a square. And that's going to be done uh, by providing the X and Y coordinates. So that's going to be the beginning of my square which is going to be these two coordinates right and then it will reach onto this coordinate which is going to be have it's going to have the same y coordinate and it's going to extend to the right uh, by a hundred pixels and width height which is higher well it goes further below by a hundred pixels uh, compared to y and then x height x y so that will put the put the end to it by coming back to the same coordinate and i'm going to go order the id HWND so that will set the subregion or sub command and run the sub command to set the region that ultimately puts a hole in the GUI so if I go ahead and run it then that's exactly what's going to happen so you can see how the uh, there is a square maybe I can uh, reduce this to 50 there we go that's kind of more in the center I suppose so there is a square that follows my mouse cursor and that brightens up the area around my mouse cursor in the shape of the square so that's how you can create it um, I can also reduce the transparency uh, to 100 and run it then I'll see it a little better I can make this make entirely go away then I'm gonna have a, a black GUI and I'm gonna be seeing what's underneath the uh, the screen by the way and then oh, sorry underneath the GUI I mean Right, so that's how it works, and what I'm going to do is also create the F1 uh, hotkey in order to toggle it on and toggle it off. And the way it's done is you go with exists and check auto key ID, HWND. Does this window exist? If it does not, ex if it does exist, then you're going to go into, I forgot the curly braces here. If it does exist, then you're going to go and hide that GUI and you're going to set the timer of spotlight to off so it doesn't do these things do these things anymore else so if the window does not exist then we're basically going to do this so we have the GUI created we just got to show it and set the transparency of it and run the or set the timer for the spotlight label so if I go ahead and run it 
and press F1 while we're here, then it toggles off, so it's back to normal. If I press F1 again, then it turns on the spotlight effect again, so I can see uh, that on other windows, other windows as well. So if the background is black, then it doesn't really help. Um, but anyway, so this is how you can create a script that is like the spotlight script right here. This is it for today's video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.